welcome back. I've been kind of busy. I've been traveling quite a bit. First up this week, I went to a blacksmithing event in Lewistown, Montana, and while I was there, I made a couple of cool things. One of the first things I made was this chisel, and this chisel I'm gonna take, I'm gonna turn it into an independent video. I started this project with a piece of spring steel, it's an old car spring, and I was able to hammer out a flange and roll it and weld it and create a socket for a piece of wood. I'm gonna finish up this video with a lathe and make a handle for this and then also harden and sharpen the blade and we'll see how it lasts. This is a great project for me. Now I can say I made a chisel. And at the same blacksmithing event, I turned these railroad spikes into what I'm calling these wizard spikes. The very first one I made right now is on eBay. If you're interested, I'm gonna put all three of them up over time. And as soon as I get my power hammer going, I'm gonna make a lot more because they're a lot of fun to make and people want them, I think. And speaking about the power hammer, this week I started working on the power hammer again. I got all the parts I need to make the drivetrain and it's probably gonna be operational soon. And finally this week, my new Rush job was for a Lord concert at the Brooklyn Barclay Center and Apparently Lord likes puzzles because I heard through the grapevine that she would like a puzzle or that she likes, she enjoys playing with puzzles. So I came up with this idea. I took the Brooklyn Bridge, some line art that I found online. I, I modified it a little bit. I found some line art of her logo. I combined them together in an Illustrator file. I CNC'd that and then I cut it apart with a jigsaw and made it into a puzzle. And a lot of people might say instantly, why wouldn't you CNC it apart? Because CNC believe me, uh, the very smallest, an eighth of an inch gap, which would have been too wide with the jigsaw, I could get a kerf that's about sixteenth of an inch. And the puzzle fits back together nicely, and the kerf is so small it doesn't interfere with the actual image on the puzzle. Last week, Brett and I flew to Montana. We went to Moccasin Mountain Hammers. It is the first of what's gonna be four times per year. Al holds it. Al is the proprietor of the Moccasin Mountain Hammers event, and he owns over 30 power hammers. And he provides the environment to learn how to use a power hammer and to learn how to blacksmith. This very first event had Brent Bailey as the teacher and instructor and inspirational figurehead of the of the event. Brent has made over 25, 26, 27,000 hammers. An incredible blacksmith and a great teacher and a nice guy. The whole reason I was at the blacksmith event was because Andrew Alexander invited me. Andrew buys and sells power hammers among many other cool old industrial antiques and he provided many of the power hammers to the Moccasin Mountain Hammers event. Andrew is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to antique vintage blacksmith tools and just a lot of tools in general. Go check out his Instagram and tell him I sent you. How long have you been collecting? I've been collecting uh, blacksmith and tools in general since I was 17. And what is, what is your most prized possession that you've collected or found? Like what is the one thing that nobody in this universe has that only you have? I have a few anvils that really, uh, 
I hold near and dear to myself. And is that because of the the rarity of them or the experience that they created? Both, both, yeah, both. I had this one experience where I got an anvil after a man had passed away and the woman actually gave it to me. She felt like I was supposed to have it. Oh, nice. Which was pretty interesting. Uh, the thrill of the chase is what I love. Is there any one thing that like you, like every time you find a lot or a field, that's the one thing you're, you're hoping to find? Anvils and power hammers are the two things that just, they'd never get old for me, ever. What is the one type of power hammer that you Well, need? the little giants are the ones I like to buy the most. Right, they're the, common, the most popular, really, the, the most, most popular, common. Yeah. And it's the ones I like to rebuild and get back to people that are using them, you know? Yeah. And how many power hammers do you currently have? Somewhere around 40. Well, in the last three years, I've sold 127 of them. Whoa. I rebuilt 91 of those 127. Wow, that's crazy. Let me ask you a few questions. Yeah, what do you want? What is it about building that makes you build? Honestly, it's just something that came to me naturally. I high school, I was never good at anything that had anything to do with other than building. The that's one awesome. thing I excelled at, drawing, sculpting, making things, figuring stuff out for the teachers, right. any mechanical, physical stuff. That's all I was just ever good at. And that's, I just kept going in that direction. Everything else was boring. This was fun, man. Good weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming, man. As a gift to Al, the owner of the event, Brent made this beautiful axe and we got to watch it be created right there before our very eyes. Now you know what you. Now you know what it's capable of. <laughs> How long have you been forging, Brent? Uh, 17 years. Uh, I learned a lot from you this week, so thank you very much. Yeah, likewise. Yeah. You're a very knowledgeable guy. Yeah. Well, my main goal is to teach young smiths right. and expose them to stuff that they wouldn't get to see elsewhere. Is this the biggest collection of power hammers, like? in one spot? I mean, I don't know. It's the biggest one in Montana, I'm sure. I don't know yeah. how far that goes. I like how they all do the same thing differently. Yeah, they that is true. They all beat on hot steel, but none of them do it exactly the same. Oh, the, the 250 Little Giant, the Jenkins and Lingle, the Champion. I think those are the most popular ones. KZ75 quite a bit today. Oh yeah, that was the Air one. Yeah, the Air one. The newest one. I think the oldest one are the Bradleys. We've got a 100 pound Bradley and a 40 pound Bradley. 1837, I think, is the patent date on them. So they're pre-Civil War. This is like a 100 pound sledgehammer. All these bolts are handmade on a lathe. You can see the marks where they ran them through the lathe. The threads are hand cut. The nuts are handmade. You can't really use a regular wrench on the nuts because there's a little bit of size difference on each side. <laughs> this is the same manufacturer, but it's a 40 pound health. This is a very rare machine because it was it's a, it was a prototype. It was only ran for a few years. How many hammers have you made in your life? Probably close to 26,000 or a little over. And I tell everybody if you want to get good at anything, you got to do it a lot. I, you think all right. <laughs> I still got a lot to learn though, I can tell you that much. And don't we all? Yeah. yeah. Right on, guys. Thanks for hosting us. I had an amazing time. Thank Thanks, you for Jim. coming. Right on, guys. Thanks, Al.
it yet. <laughs> we still got a few hours to go. Kevin, how many power hammers you got? Too many to count. <laughs> So Kevin, you live in my shop. You basically the power hammer mechanic this weekend, and everybody kind of focused on the, the big 250 pounder because it was the one people kind of got the most out of at the moment. Like, where can people find what you make? Facebook under K A W Rawhide and Steel. Right on. Go find bits, spurs, and mainly knives. Also got to hang out with Will Stelter and Ethan Hardy. These two very young blacksmiths are extremely talented. These guys really know what they're doing and they're not even 20 years old yet. One's 18 and one's 16. Not to mention the talent that Ethan has on the violin. He's also a great blacksmith. He's been at it for five or six years already. Will trained under Alex Steele, so by proxy, I was learning from Alex Steele this week. We're gonna sledgehammer right now, 13 pounds. It's like the whole entire amount of space in there. Pretty much. Right on. How long have you both been forging? I've been forging for about a year and a half now. We met to our friend Alex uh, on an online chat for young blacksmiths. Alex Steele, yeah. our friend Alex. Yeah. And you worked for Alex for a little bit a couple summers ago? Last yeah, summer? Last, last summer we went over and we built a pretty cool sword. And you're in those videos? Yeah. What series is it so people can look you up? It's the uh, Pirates Color Series from July 2017. Right. Well, I learned a lot from both of you guys, so Good. thank you very much. Good stuff. <laughs> Check out eye muffs. Eye muffs cover your eyes and your ears at the same time. And you can wear a hat. Eye muffs, cool stuff. Guys, thank you all very much. Do you guys watch Hand Tool Rescue? Eric was at the Power Hammer event. Eric is the man behind Hand Tool Rescue. Hello, everyone. Eric, what do you enjoy most about rescuing tools? Uh, for me, I enjoy the history the most. Uh, it's always something interesting where they come from, who started the company, uh, how old they are, and then just taking them apart and seeing how they work is really. Uh, I love the, the ingenuity fun. of how people had to invent stuff. Before. Yeah, exactly. It was like fusion and exactly design programs and stuff. You know, the first thing I do is always try to find the patent oh, really? that I that I can if it's on the machine or even if it isn't, just try to look. Uh, because then I can see what's going on even on parts that I don't really know what they do yet. Yeah. So it's important. By the way, we're going up a huge hill with ice and snow. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, we just survived a huge fishtail, and there's a ridge right there. What's your favorite part about rolling over down a ridge? Yeah, I think the the actual rolling part is the best part of rolling. Right. Oh, we're back on regular road now. What are some of the holy grails for you? What are some of the things you really want and need? Uh, I am on the hunt right now for a benchtop metal planer. Oh, it, like, like who makes it? Is that like a New Haven? Giant ones yeah, they? they made big ones. Wait, this, do they make a little one or is there a different company? That yeah, them? there are little ones. Maybe two, three 
maybe up to four feet uh, long and you know like a foot or two wide right and that's uh, like a shaper but the table moves and not that arm yes it's not a wood it's not a planer that planes wood it planes steel it planes steel uh, with just a little bit that moves back and forth and just slices it off a little bit at a time they didn't really have the technology to uh, you know use circular cutting tools at the time right. other than a fly cutter really well, as you're saying the future of hand tool rescue is a more a few more videos on what I would call hand tool resurrections where I would take really really old stuff we're talking the first one will be a Roman hand plane from you know like <laughs> 12 BC. Rome? There's a real Rome Roman plane. They found it in a well in Britain. Um, it was made of ivory and bronze. No kidding. Wow. And it's it's That's very neat. Tony the blade Lulu is would make. the blade's really really high up, getting close to the to being a scraper. It's very odd. Uh, and the wooden or the, I guess the ivory body has just holes in it for you to slot your hand in instead of an actual handle that you would hold and push. Wow, you'll recreate one of those. Yeah, so I'm that's hoping a, to do a... That's a great direction. To yeah. Take, to like recreate tools that are just like unobtainable. Yeah, exactly. But, but exist. Exactly. Just show kind of more of the, the history of tools as much as I can because I'm not going to go and buy a literally ancient historic museum piece. Right. And then and then, and then with rust -oleum. Yeah, and then like, go with <laughs> Rust-Oleum and like, you know, oh, this needs some Bondo here. <laughs> And just ruin it. Like that's not that's not what I'd like to do. Right now, I can do that with with tools that I've come across because there are way more than one, and it's it's not you know a travesty. Uh, but yeah, when you get to that level of of tool history, then you gotta you gotta just recreate it. Thank you for following along and here's a little preview from next week's vlog. I had so much I had to break it up. Thank you Carolina Boots.